health conditions. Today, we have Chantelle Newfeld here to speak with us. And she is an online hypnotherapist. She's a mother of three teenage daughters, and she lives in Canada. And so she's going to be sharing information about what hypnotherapy is, how it can help women with autoimmune conditions, and then she'll share with us how to connect with her. Welcome, Chantel. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> Good. I'm so happy to connect with you and, and your community. I'm always happy to meet new people. I met Chantel recently because I contacted her for help with hypnotherapy with my autoimmune condition and the anxiety that I experienced pretty much a lot of years of my life. And she helped me so much to get through my anxiety issues. And this hypnotherapy process was, it was so wonderful. I had to share it with you all in the sisterhood. Chantel, tell us a little bit about hypnotherapy and the work that you've been doing. I guess rewind five years and I was like anybody else. I didn't know what hypnotherapy was. I had heard of hypnosis and I just didn't know very much about the subconscious mind at all. And once I was introduced to the subconscious mind and hypnotherapy, my whole world changed. Everything sort of fell into place and made sense. I guess to start off, the subconscious mind is sort of running on autopilot. It controls what we do when we run out of energy. So for example, let's say you go to work, you work from nine to five, you come home, all of your energy was put into your work day. So you get home and you're just like, you know, eat whatever, chill out on the couch, zone out watching Netflix. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't you know that watching Netflix is actually hypnosis because you're in a trance, like you're not thinking about your actual reality, you're thinking about a different reality. A lot of people have a different idea of uh, hypnosis than it actually is. But what hypnosis is, is a relaxed state. It's like the theta brain waves. It's where your brain waves kind of slow down. So anytime you're relaxing, let's say you're driving in your car. Just yesterday, I was giving a friend a ride to the store. And I landed up turning onto my road to go home just because I wasn't thinking about that I had to bring her home. I was just on autopilot going home. Everyone is in the state of hypnosis every day when they're driving or right before they fall asleep, watching a movie, TV, even like if you're engrossed in a book and your partner says, hey, ask a question and you don't hear it because you're so in that book. It's like a relaxed state. So people who are dealing with chronic pain, if you get into a relaxed state or you're engrossed in something, I don't know if you can speak from experience, but does that lessen the pain where you're just so not focused on it, if that makes sense? <laughs> Totally. It makes a lot of sense. I talk about that in terms of like mindfulness often. If I'm sitting on my foot, if I'm sitting on a chair and I'm not noticing my foot is numb, it's asleep. It's been asleep for the past 20 minutes and I didn't even feel it until just now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The mind body connection is fascinating. So for my clients, when they come in, I ask if they do have any pain. Usually they come in for emotional, mental issues, but I always ask if there's any pain present and often there is. Get them to rate it from one to 10. And then at the end, ask again what their level of pain is. It always goes down because when your whole body relaxes like that, you can't help but relax everything. When our bodies are tensed up, then there's more pain. I also want to talk about the placebo effect. That has confused people for so long. Like, how does it work? Why does it work so well? It's really the power of the mind to make change in the body. When someone believes that this magic pill will change something, it's not the magic pill that's making the change. It's their mind actually has the power to rewrite or change things in the body. I don't understand it all from a medical or scientific standpoint, but I do believe in it 100%. Placebo effect, which is what hypnotherapy is. Hypnotherapy puts the client into a relaxed state so that they can make changes in their own mind and change their beliefs and all of this stuff. Does that make sense? Definitely. I love this conversation so much. I think there's so much power in the placebo effect. And I think scientifically, we're only just getting started on trying to understand what that is. And then also the subconscious mind, we have like that system one, system two way of thinking. You know, really, there's so much there that has not fully been explored yet and how that can affect chronic disease and chronic pain, things like that. There's so much power in there. And I love exploring this topic of the placebo effect and how the power of the mind. I mean, even if, you know, some people really truly believe in medication and traditional 
medicine, uh, there's still something in the power of the placebo effect and it's, it's definitely worth exploring as well. So I would love for you to share with us more examples of how hypnotherapy can help people with autoimmune diseases. You mentioned chronic pain, which is very common. It's a huge issue in the autoimmune community. There's also issues such as like fatigue or even there's brain fog, there's fatigue, there's, there's numbness. Then there's even depression and anxiety. I'd love if you could share with us a couple of examples of how uh, women with chronic disease, such as autoimmune disease, would benefit from hypnotherapy. Well, just looking at where dis disease comes from, I like to call it dis-ease, so not being at ease in your body. So what happens to all of us as we go through life, we experience some sort of trauma. And what happens usually is that if there's an electrical charge in an emotion or someone suppresses their emotion, doesn't feel to heal, they just lock it down inside thinking that it's going to go away, it causes energy blockages in the body. So you can visualize that as maybe like a balloon or a bubble of just trapped emotion in the body. And when there's trapped emotion in the body, it causes dis-ease. It causes the energy to not be flowing through the body. That's what hypnotherapy helps with. It goes into the body, finds those trapped areas where there's that electrical charge and emotion. It releases the emotion. And so once that emotion is released, people are lighter, just like they can breathe easier. Their, their whole body is more relaxed and like energy can flow through. And then they can start having the energy to do things that excite them again. And so then, oh yeah, I was going to talk about depression. What I feel depression is, is when people do not feel their feelings, whether they're bad feelings, they also can't feel their good feelings. They just stuff all of the feelings down, lock them up in boxes or however they do it. So if you can't feel the bad emotions, you also can't feel the good emotions. And us as humans, we're emotional creatures. Like we feel the good and the bad. Every day is good and bad. I've been finding lately, it's a matter of not fighting the bad. It's about just letting, letting things flow through. Say, what is the lesson here? And then you can transform it into something good and just, just picture that energy flowing through the body. I like every day in the shower, I just like to picture white light or energy or something just coming in through the top of my head and just cleaning everything out of my mind, everything out of my body that's not meant to be there, and then just visualizing like dirt or debris washing down to the drain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Simple meditation you can do every day, but it's helpful when you're visualizing the cleaning out, the energetic clearing out. It was about the pain and also being available to acknowledge these uh, negative thoughts and these feelings and these issues within the body, the challenges that we're experiencing with the autoimmune community, the autoimmune journey. And this is very foundational to the Sisterhood of Limitless Living, very much connected to what you're saying. So when we're begun to experience an autoimmune diagnosis, begun to experience those symptoms and the relapse and the whole, all of this host of issues, there's a couple of ways we can approach it. We can approach it with anger, fighting it. Am I really wanting to fight? I'm really interested more in acknowledging it. I'm really interested in listening to what's going on, listening to the problem, you know, acknowledging that something's there and then learning from it and then moving forward, accepting the fact that this is this is part of the challenge. This is the puzzle that we are that we're in. <laughs> I can relate to that a lot because the last half a year I've been struggling with skin issues, mm -hmm. eczema and a serious form of it. And so I was in pain, I was in discomfort like constantly and I was trying everything that I could to figure out what it was. What helped me a lot, there was this book I read, it's called Feeding Your Demons. Demons, they mean like something that's holding you back or they mean like an illness of some sort. And it was like this whole visualization of, well, I'll just go through it. It might not make very much sense because you haven't read the book, but the process is you put this chair across from you and then you close your eyes and you just imagine whatever it is that you're dealing with, whether it be a limiting belief or an illness. And then you kind of give it eyes and <laughs> a body, like um, arms and legs, like you kind of give it a physical form. And you ask it, why are you there? What do you need? How will you feel when you get what you need? 
And the answers that come through are just amazing because you trade places and then you answer your own question. <laughs> and you can do that when you're in your subconscious mind. It's like a dream. And then you trade back and you feed it the nectar of whatever it will get what gets what it needs. And then it transforms. It transforms into a different, it looks like a different character altogether, like something friendly, an ally, someone who can help you and then you ask that ally how it supports you so that when you wake up you have this new found learning and this new you understand the reason of what your body was trying to say and in my case my body was trying to say that i had suppressed anger that wasn't being i wasn't expressing my boundaries and so my body was speaking for me by <laughs> flaring up my skin because i wasn't expressing verbally what i should have been expressing and so when you start studying the science of the subconscious mind, the best scientist I know is Candace Pert. And she writes this book called The Body is the Subconscious Mind. Mm. And so that realization that the body actually is the subconscious mind, it's where all of our emotions are stored. It blew my mind. With the autoimmune condition, a lot of the time we have this conversation and it may be applicable to some people, not everyone, I don't know. This is a theme that we see emerge quite often, this type A personality. The person who is always working really hard, let's say you work really hard in a company or for your job, and you're always working to please people. Mm. You find that a lot of people with that type A personality tend to have these autoimmune conditions. So that's a conversation that I've seen come up quite often. And then you have to wonder what's behind that. Often we are just repeating patterns from our childhood from seven and under. There was a parent that we were trying to please or if we didn't feel good enough in school or something like that. So then in adulthood, we're just trying and even in our relationships, not even our, not just our jobs, but relationships, we're trying to heal that past. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm. I've fallen in love with hypnotherapy because of how much it helped me. Like talk therapy, I would just get re-traumatized, figure out a few things, but the actually going inside to the subconscious mind, making those changes, the changes are not only fast, like fast forward from talk therapy, but they're also an autopilot, like just like a reroute. It forms new pathways of the mind so mm -hmm. that it's automatic in your everyday life and you don't have to consciously think and try, you know, like you don't have to try to do this and try to do that. It just it's the new way of being. And often people don't even remember how bad their past was unless they had documented it in some way. Yeah, that's a huge conversation that's currently emerging, I guess, with the medical community. I'm thinking of two examples. I'm thinking of the talk about in the primary care conference community, the conversations that have been coming up are around adverse childhood experiences. Discussion out there right now, I don't know if you've seen a lot about that recently, but they are talking a lot more about how adverse childhood experiences have been related to chronic diseases. And so it's mm -hmm. really interesting. And so there's like that emergence and it's coming together where that hypnosis, the mind-body connection is really emerging in the field of medicine, finally. Mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so even with the NIH, they have this new branch. It's relatively new, National Institute of Integrative and Complementary Health. That's this new part of the NIH where researchers and clinicians can work together on mind-body approaches to medicine and science. So there's definitely so much there. And you are there. You're in that field where it's just emerging, this conversation of connecting legitimacy to the mind and the thought to physical health in the medical community who accepted social form of health conversation. It's there right now, it's emerging, it's exciting. And so I love having this conversation about the power of the mind and the subconscious. I may be a therapist, but I'm also human. Well, the day before yesterday I recorded and yesterday I put out on my social media, on my YouTube, a session where I was the client and my teacher was the therapist. And so I can give you a little bit of a rundown of what timeline therapy is like, which is a form of hypnotherapy. But if you really want to see it in action, just go ahead and watch that video. Timeline therapy is putting you in that relaxed state. So the dreamlike state going up above the timeline of your life and then asking your subconscious mind where the source event is a root cause where this was first locked away, which is usually before age seven then going back there, way up above, so you're disassociated, so you're not having a tra re-traumatization. Just looking at it, seeing what there is to learn from that event, reframing your beliefs around that event, 
and healing that emotion, releasing that emotion, sending the light to you and whoever is around you. It's amazing. And so when you take that root out, what happens is all the other events on your timeline that have had that same emotion or that same belief, they automatically get rewired. So when you go and revisit those again, it doesn't have that electrical charge in it because that root, that electrical charge has been taking, taken out of that. So you see it as if it happened to someone else. So then in the future, then you don't get the panic attack. You don't get the trigger if someone does something to trigger you, even if you don't understand what the trigger is. And like you have a bit of experience with that too with your last session. I don't know if you want to elaborate on that or not. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to share a little bit about that for sure as well. Um, yeah, it was so powerful because of the fact that looking at it from this far away perspective, so you're looking at this bigger kind of universal picture, but then you're also zooming in. So like Chantel's talking about the timeline therapy where you're zoomed out and you're looking almost like if you're looking at a, a map, you're looking across from birth till the current time and even into the future. And you're looking at all these key events, you're visualizing all the things that have happened and you're targeting these moments where you've seen this first occurrence of whatever it is that is bothering you, that issue, and then addressing it even down to the details, like going zooming in, zooming out. It's just been really amazing. It's a really empowering, enlightening, I can't even explain it. It, like, it goes through your emotions, it goes through your memories, and it goes through resolving all of these issues that have been currently bothering you. And so um, even through hypnosis, you're able to start to remember things um, these thoughts and these past memories and these um, locations that I don't think about very often at all. I don't even remember these things, but you know, during this session, and you remember everything. During the session, I remember these uh, scenes of my childhood that I had not even thought about for forever, for decades. So it's, yeah, I loved it. It was just a wonderful experience. It's so thorough as well. So like, it's just everything. <laughs> it's just such a well, the subconscious mind. It it stores all of our memories and all of our emotions. Right. And so, how did you know that it had worked after? Was it like an emotional feeling you had, or was it something different in your everyday life? Mm -hmm. Or how did you know that you know it made a difference for you? Right. So, like you mentioned, the the electrical charge was gone. So, you know, um, traveling, um, having that feeling of dread in traveling that was gone. Uh, so I was able to go you know, out there and, and do everything I needed to do without that feeling of fear and of dread. And it was just gone. Being able to think about even sitting in my chair and thinking about it, that feeling was no longer there. Mm. Wow. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and here's the thing. I didn't do that. You did that. All of the changes that you made, all the healing that was done was from your own mind. I was just the flashlight person, the guide going through the, the cave, you know, shining the light of where you could look at to make changes. And then, but I didn't, you know, I didn't do anything. Like I wasn't the healer. You were the healer. We have this incredible power with our mind to heal ourselves. And a lot of people are finding that through journaling too, bringing to awareness. I find journaling to be incredible too. I can see how it would be so beneficial for like pain and other issues, maybe even fatigue and depression, brain fog. I can see the benefits of hypnosis for helping with a variety of health issues and mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And like what I offer with a one-on-one -on -one is a personalized, thorough healing. But I have free recordings to listen to on YouTube for if you want to go to sleep, like let's say you're in pain or discomfort and you want to go to sleep. Listening to that, visualizing, relaxing your body one part at a time, visualizing that you're, you know, in another space, like just sort of takes you off to dreamland and helps you relieve the pain and sleep deeply. Just look up my website is chantelln.com. I'm also all over social media <laughs> under Mindful Regeneration. Mm -hmm. So look me up and get the free stuff. And if you want a free consult, that's available too. <laughs> I love Chantel's post on Instagram. She has these beautiful images and quotes. They're so powerful and they're so insightful. I love all of your Instagram content. Thank you. Like I find that the subconscious mind speaks through symbols and metaphors. And what I find these drawings that I, I like to share, 
I don't draw them myself, but I get permission from the artist to share them. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of a quote, but most of the message is in the drawing. So the subconscious mind understands those drawings and what they're trying to express. And I think that's what's so powerful about the posts is that you can see like the picture and then it registers somehow. Thanks, Chantel. You're doing such amazing work and it's so needed out there. So many of us are going through some sort of traumatic experience at some level and how it's manifesting in our bodies, uh, whether it be any other type of health condition, mental health condition or autoimmune disease. There's just so much need for this type of work addressing these issues and no longer walking around with you know the baggage and the pain mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that uh, it's our job to resolve and mm -hmm. so i really appreciate your work thank you i also want to put in a plug for uh, joanna cameron she does drain that pain so it's also an online video session but it's uh, very much geared more towards physical pain instead of emotional. I'm more the emotional, but the, the physical is like a bonus, but she focuses on the physical. So that's Joanna Cameron from Drain That Pain. Also the book, like I mentioned before, Feeding Your Demons. I also have a friend who can take you through the process of that. I'm currently learning that. That's also very powerful to connect with the body and ask the body, what are you trying to say? So often with our conscious mind, it's a challenge to figure out what our body's trying to say. But when we go into, when we have a guide that helps us access our subconscious mind, we can find out what our body is trying to say. And there are many people who have had an autoimmune disease who have gotten amazing relief. So their, their life is back to normal again after doing the subconscious work. Mm -hmm. So there is hope. That's my message. There is hope. <laughs> There's hope. And there's mm -hmm. so much there. There's definitely power in the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And it's more about the surrender and the feeling the feelings instead of the resisting and the fighting. Right, exactly. Surrendering and learning yeah. from it instead of resisting and fighting. So Chantel, mm -hmm. uh, before we leave, I heard that you have started a new podcast. Oh yeah, I did. It's called Intuitive Conversations. I was so blessed to find my friend Tamara living close to me and we have so much in common and I find that, well, we both find that it's easier to talk about these things when there's two of us, you know, and you can bounce it back and forth just like we're doing today instead of, you know, just <laughs> trying to come up with everything all by yourself. Yeah, I'm excited. Just I'm, I'm excited about your podcast too, to just explore new topics. And if anyone has ideas of topics, I would love to explore those too. Looking forward to listening to your new podcast, Intuitive Conversations. All right. Well, thank you so much, Chantel. Is there anything else you would like to share with the autoimmune community? Just remember the mind-body connection. It's very powerful. Thank you for listening to the Sisterhood of Limitless Living podcast. I hope this information has been beneficial and helpful for you. Follow us on iTunes, Spotify, or Stitcher, and leave us a review or follow us on the Facebook group, the Sisterhood of Limitless Living Facebook group, or visit me at www.aprilmorenophd.com. Take care.